There is a very important point where craft becomes art. Check this out. Yes, for this one. For a lot of musicians and guitar players, these folks and the ability to play like that sounds magical. But it's actually very possible. We all feel that feeling of unfreedom or you know, kind of being locked in, if you will. Now, I want to show you a few really simple things that if you do every day, you'll get so, so free and so much faster. I gathered five of the best speed exercises that I think will really change your world very quickly. I'm going to show you right now and I'm going to show you exactly how to practice them and how to process that because one of the most important things is how to go about things and not the things themselves. It's like, oh, you want to get good at running, run, but how do you run? You want to get a good guitar? get good at guitar, you play guitar, but how do you play, how do you practice? So we're gonna go exactly over that. Let's do it. Oh, please click the like button and subscribe, it mean a lot. Finger strength. We're actually going to go to a mini guitar gym, right? So I'm like literally taking this finger and pushing the string down. Right, so this is like the two action, hitting it, hammer on, and then pushing it down. It will sound like that in time. And then I'm gonna go to the next string. Maybe four times, and then switching to the next string. It's actually harder than it looks. <laughs> it's like, it sounds oh, okay, very easy, but once you do it for about three to five minutes, you're really gonna feel it. So I'm gonna do it basically with all these options all the strings and then when I get to the E string I usually push it up so and then the same thing down 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 now the thing is you want to do it with all the options so one two one three one four and then two three two four and then three four now this is going to be really really not that easy especially when you play in time so start doing it three to five minutes a day and you are set with this one. Next step is extremely important and actually will push you forward quite a bit. So the technique that we're talking about is hammer on and pull off. We're playing one note and hitting the other note. Playing one note and hitting the other note. Same way, playing a note and pulling off, playing and pulling off. I'm going to play in time for a second. I'm gonna try and be balanced. Now, it might look simple, but once we push the tempo and get into some other shapes it will be very very cool and really will get your motion and and um, speed very fast check that <laughs> exaggerating the pull off because I want to have control here as much as I can so again the motion the basic idea is playing a note and hammering on and I, I'm trying to have these two notes as if I'm playing them as if I'm alternate picking but it will sound like that versus trying to have the sound close to alternate picking in a way as much control as we can. Now this is not easy at all. The thing is, if we get the technique and the fundamentals really strongly, it will get very easy and very fast to progress with speed. Now the secret to a lot of these things is trying to think and feel light. Like a lot of times when uh, we play and practice this thing, it feels hard. So Emotionally and mentally, I'm, I keep telling myself, oh, this is light, this is easy, this is not hard, almost, right? I'm just trying to think of like, okay, what is the energy? What is the amount of literally power that I need to push the string down? So I'm trying to be efficient and I'm trying to make things light, accurate and light. This is the practice for me. This step is one of the places most people fall. The reason is that they're not hearing the rhythms in a clear way. They're not feeling the subdivision. Now, it's very important to not only be able to play eight notes or 16 notes, but also to hear the triplets and being able to move between these subdivisions in a clear and easy way. Check this out. Quarters. I 
idea here is that we can hear and feel the different parts of the subdivision. Now I just kind of ran quickly between them so you hear the sounds. But the idea is that we can hang and stay on each one of them as long as we need to articulate it. Now it doesn't need to be fast, it just needs to be accurate to start with. The trick here is being able to listen to the groove and hear the subdivision against it. Like so, chords. Ta, 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 ta. This is a good place to start, just one, two, three, four. When I was playing the scale, I also did quarter notes, I did quarter triplets, eight notes, triplets. 16 and six topless. Now it depends on the tempo and all these variables, but the idea is being able to be clear for yourself and then bring it to the guitar and the music. The next step here is being very thorough. So instead of just doing it with one or two options of the fingers, doing it with all the options. I'll do it for a second just so you hear the sound really quickly and then we'll go for it. <laughs> Maybe then I'll go to the other finger, so... And then this... Huh. Definitely more lazy. For me these fingers, the 3 and 4 are definitely the hardest. And I'll do it with different tempos, right? So I'll, I'll try to repeat some of the elements quite a few times, like so... Etc. Etc. Just to get the motion and the clarity. Now the tempo is not the point right now. We'll get there. But the first thing is really to nail down all the options in a clear, clear way. This is probably the most important, interesting step because here we're actually gonna start making music. Instead of just a shape that is random in a way, just kind of shapey, we're taking a piece of music. It could be a pentatonic, it could be a scale, it could be a arpeggio. I'm gonna choose the pentatonic. I'm gonna choose the A minor pentatonic. So it's a combination of 1, 4, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 4, right? So it's not very complicated and if we practice the other thing for a week or two, our fingers are going to start getting quicker and easier to respond to that. So check this out. I'm going to just play uh, a track so we have some harmonic sound and I'm going to play Summertime. And I'm just going to play the subdivision a little bit and then I'm going to move around utilizing these subdivision. Basically just hammer on pull off this idea of legato in this area. Let's check it out. I want to try and be aware of the chords and the sounds. It's too much, don't worry about it, but if you can, be aware of the chords and the melody while playing this subdivision. And shifting, it's a technical exercise, but still trying to bring the structure and the music a little bit. Shifting between the subdivisions. One of this as a, as a starting framework is to try and get the motion of these subdivisions in a comfortable way on a structure, on a shape that is not just this. Another fun thing you can do is play the melody and between the melody kind of play these ideas of legato in between the breaks. But even just that, the idea of like playing the melody and then between going into the subdivision or some of this motion that is very simple, it's very technical, but it gives us the freedom to think about it and to create and place it in time and in structure. Thank you so much for listening and being a part of this journey uh, with guitar and music. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.